Hi. Bozo, Ani, Tansy. Thank you for joining us in the evening of showcasing our students at the Center for Indigenous Theater. We have a roundup of eight first year students who spent a great semester learning and honing their theater art skills. We have dance performances, improv, story creation, and so much more. So welcome to the first of three action-packed evenings of talent and entertainment brought to you by CIT's first year students and faculty. Today I am your host, Jody Taylor, coming to you live from North Bay, Ontario. I am also a theater arts graduate, so I know the amount of work and dedication that goes into these performances, and I am so happy to be here to host. But before we begin, this is a pay what you can show, and as you may already know, we thrive off of your donations. Your donations fuel our programming for our students and helps us provide the best education possible. If you're interested in donating to CIT, please click the link in the description. Now that we've got that covered, we're kicking off the evening with a recorded session of Introduction to Improv with Jane Luke, followed by Ed Roy's class Introduction to Shakespeare. So let's jump on to it. Nea Nehio. My name is Kitsune. I am the offspring of a residential school survivor. Many of the students here have similar stories where their parents, grandparents, and great grandparents went to residential schools, where our culture, our language, and identity was stripped from us. Our practice is forbidden. Today I'm here to give thanks by doing a land acknowledgement and thanking the caretakers that came before us. But instead of doing a specific acknowledgement, I put down some tobacco today for you to have a safe journey and to enjoy the show. If you'd like to know whose land you're currently occupying, check out these two resources here. So whether you're here in Ontario, in Toronto like the students, or nationwide, giving thanks to those who came before us means that we are giving thanks to our ancestors and the many generations who came before us today. For those of you new here, uh, my name is uh, Jane Luke and I teach the improvisational techniques at CIT. Uh, we've been working on uh, building on the concept of yes and, which is the basic fundamental of uh, improvising. Um, sorry, you know what? Uh, yes, let me do this. Um, yes, uh, so we're, we've been building on the basic fundamentals of, uh, of yes and, which is to say yes to ideas and offers, supporting them and advancing the uh, ideas. Uh, we've also been uh, working on narrative storytelling, so the idea of beginning, middle, and end, finding endings, uh, who, what, where in the scene, and intentions. On top of that, we've been doing something called uh, what I call character stretching. So finding ways to stretch uh, and create characters within ourselves, uh, vocally, physically, intentionally, emotionally. And all doing this while just being spontaneous and being in the moment, um, as well as trusting our scene partners and building and collaborating with each other. Um, so uh, we've, I'd like to, I also want to introduce some people who are going to be helping us today. Uh, uh, Rob Williams, uh, who will be giving us some uh, musical accompaniment. Uh, Rob, can you make your presence known? There he is. Um, so Rob will be helping to uh, bring in some music as well as finding uh, some sounds and other musical ways of ending scenes since we're on Zoom and we don't have a curtain necessarily to close the scene. And because it's improvised, we don't know when that will happen. Ah, uh, yes, everything will be completely improvised today. Nothing has been rehearsed except for the format of the scene. So everything's going to be made up right on the spot here. The students are going to use all their skills uh, to perform improvisationally for you today. Um, 
I also have, uh, so Lindsay uh, Sarazen, who is also here recording remotely from outer space. Thank you, Lindsay, for helping us do this. Uh, and as I said, he will be helping us put all our pieces uh, together uh, for the larger showcase March 26th. Okay, uh, I'd like to call you now to uh, this chat feature because we are doing this live. Um, if you click on the chat feature, you'll be able to see on the right side for most people, uh, it says everyone, um, a, a place there for you to um, chat. Uh, in other words, put your suggestions there. So just to practice, I just wonder, uh, I just wanted uh, to get everyone to just uh, improvise with us and the first thing that comes to mind. Um, if I were to say to you, uh, what is, uh, what is an animal? You just type it into the chat and just click respond. Okay. Oh, Amy's here. A bear, a bat. Uh, uh, these are things that are another bear, <laughs> uh, cat. Uh, so anteater, bat bear, <laughs> brachiosaurus. Yes, they can also be prehistoric. Uh, dog, perfect. Thank you. So the first thing that comes to mind, that is absolutely great. Um, absolutely, uh, uh, that's really great. Okay, penguin, turtle, okay. All right, thank you. So once I have selected a suggestion, I'm gonna ask you to stop using the chat during the performance uh, and uh, to just watch the performance. And after the, after the scene, uh, each scene is done, certainly please, I encourage you to write any uh, positive uh, feedback of support for the student and I can read it back for them as well. Um, great. So for our first uh, scene for you, I'm going to bring up, please, uh, Kian, Pearl, and Kahu. You guys can come on. There they are. Great. Hi, guys. Um, I'd like to get a suggestion from the audience, please, of uh, what's a uh, first name. Just make up any first name and just put it out there, and I'll just pick one that I can uh, see. So I, the first one I see is Jimmy. So Jimmy. And another suggestion is uh, what's an everyday uh, object? <laughs> okay, I've got some other great names, but any, any everyday kind of object that you have. Okay, so the first thing I saw is, uh, uh, okay, so I'll go with toaster. Jimmy and the Magic Toaster. So this is a story that will be told collaboratively between uh, Curl, sorry, <laughs> Pearl, Kian, and Kahu. They're going to give one story to one line at a time, but they're going to leave a fill in the blank and they hand over this sentence to the next person. Okay, so thank you so much. Yeah, sorry, uh, I put Curl and Curl. I said it again. Pearl and Kin together get curl. All right. So I'm going to close the chat for now. And uh, I'm going to take my camera out. And uh, we bring for you now the story of Jimmy and the toaster. One morning, Jimmy wakes up and he's hungry for some toast. So he goes into his fridge, he grabs some bread, and he pops it in the toaster. And he notices that the toast was done real quick within a second, a blink of an eye. And he was wondering, why? Why so quick? He looked at it, he picked it up, and he see that it was glowing. Because... It was a toaster from the future. He looked at it, moved it one way, moved it the other way, and he realized that there was some technology in there that was from aliens. The reason he knew this is because on the side, the symbols didn't make sense to him. Instead, they were... They said the date, and the date was 2035. So then he put two and two together, and he was like, this is from the future. He was like, I wonder what else this toaster could do. So then he decided to put in a couple of vegetables. And it made the vegetables 
spoiled. So. So he's like, huh, this is very interesting. He poured out the, the water, boiled vegetables, put it down, and then he went to go grab some waffles to see what happened if he put waffles in there. And once he did, something else happened, and it was... These waffles came out ten times the size of a regular waffle shit. So he got the idea. How about I start making waffles as a business? So he named this business... Coaster of the Future. But he didn't tell if he was actually from the future. He just thought it was a cool name. But the business ended up taking off because a lot of people like waffles. But these weren't just any waffles. They were magic waffles from the future. And so, as his business was going very good, he wanted to know more about this toaster. So he looked into it more by opening it up of what he saw and he's seeing this little crystal and it was glowing. He looked at it and he realized that this is something that they call an infinity stone. So he grabbed the crystal and this crystal gave him crazy powers. He ended up becoming really jacked, became really smart, and he... And people were kind of suspicious because his business started to slow down and he wasn't selling as many waffles because little did they know he was just so into this new creation that he found that like given him all these new little gifts. And they were wondering how he's gotten so rich. So one day, one of his friends is creeping around his house and he sees. He sees the stone that he left on the counter in the kitchen and wondered, what is that that he put there? So he went to the window to look more closer. He sees that his friends picked it up. And uh, seeing how jacked he came. And he was like, wow, I want that. Right when he was about to go inside and grab it. Something happened and it was. His finger fell off. This caused him to go and give Jimmy a lawsuit. Because he was a superman, but the law still works for superman or not. So, Jimmy had to sell his toaster so he could pay off the debt that the law gave him. The moral of the story is... Don't mess with things from the future. Good lesson learned there, everybody. Thank you. Curl, curl, and you. Curl, Kian, and Kahu. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. What great, uh, you're getting lots of great uh, response here. Standing ovation, bravo. Uh, so people want to sell the rights of the story already, so you hang on to it. Okay, great. Thank you so much, guys. And get you to take your cameras out. Uh, yeah, great. Yeah, completely improvised on the spot. Uh, yeah, that was, it was great. Uh, and again, they had no idea it was going to go that way. Uh, but that's the beauty of improv that they're creating collaboratively together for the first time. Uh, and the first time for us uh, as witnesses. Okay, um, next up, uh, before I call the next group, can I get um, what's a, uh, if you can type in the chat here, a, um, uh, what's 
a weather condition, just any kind of weather condition. So I've got I've got rain and storm. Can I also get um, just an animal? I know I asked you for that before. It's just on my mind. Just uh, just any kind of uh, animal. getting here wait let me just scroll 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 i'm trying to read i'm very limited with this okay uh uh am i getting any animals here sorry oh my gosh technology okay okay from the audience the audience okay i got blue jay thank you lisa Sorry if I didn't get to yours. Um, the scroll ability here is just okay. <laughs> okay, great. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, I've, I've got Blue Jay. I know. <clears throat> scroll ability. I wish I had that. Okay, so now I'm sure everyone. Um, don't worry. Uh, don't be sad, Bob, because uh, there are other scenes that I will be getting uh, suggestions. That this is not the end and so um you know have some hope <laughs> so i would like to bring on um the next group can i get dm and river to the stage great all right okay great so, uh, I'm going to ask that um, uh, DM and River are going to be working together. Uh, River uh, is going to be playing a renowned, world-renowned poet. Unfortunately, this poet does not speak English. And his only translator will be played by DM. And um, they're going to present to you today the premiere and also finale of uh, the Rainstorm of Blue Jays. They came up like from the ocean where they were one. And they swept across the sun, blocking it out and turning the yellow blue. <laughs> there was a delicate balance of the blue and yellow appearing turning into a luscious green to be danced upon. <laughs> a gentle rain began to fall. Oh. And all the birds picking up little tiny baseball bats and swinging it. <laughs> they found that they could make themselves rise higher in a ballet-like motion if they dropped their bats. Uh... Uh, and they did. They did an incredible ballet. And there was yellow and green and blue. Ooh. And they rested whole and in the light of the new day. Thank you so much, uh, DM and River. 
for that riveting rendition of Rain and Storm of the Blue Jays. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, uh, your comments. I'm hearing uh, bravo and uh, beautiful. Where can I get a signed copy? Uh, very lovely. Uh, yes, I'm trying to read as quickly as I can. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, messages of support, everyone in the audience. Thank you. Um, great. So now we're going to move on. And um, before I get uh, our next group up, Again, I'm going to ask you to uh, just write in the chat um, just some uh, random a random sentence. So it can be the uh, can be a line of dialogue. Could be something like um, "I just got a new hat," something like that, or it could be uh, literary, like "It was a dark and stormy night." So I think I have enough here, which is great. Uh, okay, so if I can ask you to stop uh, uh, putting in suggestions. Um, great. So, uh, now, um, our next group, I'm not going to get you, you guys, well, can you come up one at a time? But in this scene, we will have Francis, Francis, Brandon, and Sonny. So one by one, they are going to, uh, appear and they're going to make a wedding toast. Okay. They're all at the same wedding. They're going to make a wedding toast, but their first sentence must begin with one of the ones that I choose here. So, uh, let me, I'm just going to uh, find one here and get this ready. So there's a little bit more for me to do here. <laughs> okay. So, our first scene, I believe, is Francis. So again, the first line of dialogue will be the one that I give them. And uh, once they um, uh, once they are on, they, their first line is that line, and then they have to explain why this is part of their wedding toast. Okay? So, without further ado, I'm gonna take my camera out and uh, we will have Francis come out first. Hello, everyone. Everyone loves a tickle. Who doesn't love tickle? Little kids love tickles. Teenagers love tickles. Adults love getting tickled. I don't know about old people. Maybe, I don't know if their senses are all there, but anyways, that's besides the point. We're here to celebrate Bonnie and Clyde. Almost a coincidence that they're that names, but I'm just so glad that you guys are able to be here today. The reason I even became friends with Bonnie was the guy used to always tickle me in high school. I thought it was kind of weird because it's just another guy coming up to me and like tickling me in class. At first I was like, uh, can you stay back? But I kind of realized that was just this thing. He loved tickling people and in a way we sort of bonded with that. So I don't know. It's just, I'm just really... I'm just really proud. I'm really proud of how far they've come along. And, you know, Bonnie, he still tickles me to this day, emotionally and physically. So here's the cheers to you, Bonnie and Clyde. Ooh, take me to the moon spotty. You always knew the music. All right, this, let me have a seat here. I'll suggest my seat. <clears throat> Bonnie and Clyde, <clears throat> great. <clears throat> um, I don't really want to be here. Bonnie and Clyde, Bonnie, you, you are a wonderful woman. Clyde, my man, I'm so glad that I was able to come out here, dress up, come to the wedding. It's really nice out. I'm enjoying the weather. And again, Spotty, thank you for the music. And I'd like to make a toast to Bonnie and Clyde. The Jewish couple. <laughs> Sorry about that. I have a little delay, you know. Being with uh, COVID and all, I don't really know how to socialize these days. <laughs> oh, okay. So these pretzels are making me thirsty. Isn't that right, Clyde? Those pretzels that you and I shared? That one summer in... Well, I can't say it in front of Bonnie. Which brings me to Bonnie. Hello, Bonnie. 
How are you doing? It's funny that you put me in the children's table. Couldn't have, any, have anything to do with the summer I spent with your husband, could it? <laughs> you bitch. What? Bitch is a term of endearment. And I certainly endured myself to Bonnie. Everybody knows how endearing I am to Clyde. Anyways, I have other engagements to go to besides this stupid little wedding. Cheers to your couple and Clyde. Call me when this is over. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, that was Francis, Brandon, and Sonny at the wedding that uh, everyone would love to be at, I'm sure. Uh, fantastic. That's great. So again, everybody completely made up on the spot. Um, okay. Our uh, last scene will be the entire cast. And uh, we're going to, uh, this is called uh, call waiting. So basically, we're combining for the first time the technology of Zoom uh, and uh, the digital world around us and incorporating it into the scene. Basically, uh, every uh, two people, when, while they're having their conversation, they will get a call interrupted, uh, a call waiting. And uh, this, in this way, we're going to see, uh, be introduced characters they haven't played just yet. So each uh, person that is participating will create, will present a brand new character. We're going to find out why they're calling uh, and who they are. So, uh, can I get, uh, I'm just going to go to the chat one last time. Uh, and by the way, great, uh, lots of great comments. I'm, I'll give it an opportunity at the end there, the end of this for everyone to uh, give oops, a chance to really respond. Um, could someone give me um, a suggestion of why um, our first caller, maybe what, why would they be calling someone? So if you think about maybe they're, they want to borrow something, they want to check in on something, maybe there is um okay. All right. How to get, I, I'm seeing uh, all kinds of great things. Houses on fire. <laughs> uh, okay, I, okay, what else? Sorry. What is the hot tub? All right. Oh my gosh. Let me just grab. Oh my god. This, okay. Oh, all right. Uh, I just want to keep this kind of uh, simple for them. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Um, I I got uh, to get someone to fix a sink. To get someone to they're so they're they're calling because their sink. Uh, backed up. So, can I get Pearl to the stage? Just going to, we're going to see her character. So this is going to be like a phone call, but we're going to take technology and uh, as if uh, instantly it's uh, a FaceTime conversation. So in terms of someone asking about quarantining, it's all on the phone. So via some kind of uh, Zoom, Skype, uh, FaceTime uh, method of of talking to each other. Okay, so we're gonna. So I see Pearl is ready, and when she's ready, she I'll take my camera out. She will unmute, and then we will get. We'll see who is going to be calling her in a few seconds. Hello. Oh, what's up, bro? It's Willie. Hi. How are you? Wait, Hi. who's your It's Willie, bro. How you doing? Oh, right. Okay. Um, yeah. So, like, I know I haven't talked to you in, like, forever, bro. Like, I don't know, since high school. But I was like looking in the trans papers the other day and I saw that like, you uh, run a sink business or something. Right, um, I do, but for the right price. 
You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Everybody's got their price, bro. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, you know, like, tell me discount. I'm, you know. But. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> so, like, I have a problem with my sink, bro. Okay. Let's like, see. when I try to, like, use my sink, I can't do, I can't do anything with my sink. It just stays there. I'm like, what's going on with my sink, bro? Oh, I hate when that happens. Yeah, yeah like, totally. I can grab, like, my tools or whatever. Ah, uh, you got some okay. tools, bro. You're so professional. I know. Yeah. Um. Are you sure it's just, like, not, like, plugged up or anything? Like, uh, you know what, bro? I don't even know how to use a sink. I like you know, always get takeout. Uh, so like, I just moved into this place and I try to use my sink, and I I don't know, it's not working. Okay, well, I got you. I can grab my tools and come over. Um, again for the right price. All right, on, bro. Yeah, I can pay you with cookies, bro. I got like lots of cookies, but like special cookies. Oh, shit, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got another call, bro. I'll talk to you later. Uh, hello? Hello. Hey, how's that, bro? Hi, I'm, um, Steven. Oh, hello, Steven. What's up, bro? How do you want, bro? I am here to, uh, talk about, um, your dinner invitation. Do you still uh... want to schedule it for 5 p.m.? Oh, bro, like, I have so many dinner invitations. You gotta be more specific. Ah, oh, yes, this is the one for uh, Red Lobster. Oh, Red Lobster, bro, it's not me. Uh, uh, oh, you know what? I went to Red Lobster one time with my grandma. She must have made the Red Lobster uh, reservations for us. Hmm. That's probably why she made it at 5 p.m. You know those old people? <laughs> They're always eating uh, so early. I see, I see. We usually get these a lot, so. I see. Thank you for letting me know. Would yeah, you still like to attend it with your uh, grandma? Yeah, she's probably going to bring Charles, though. So uh, I'll probably dip out after, like, two minutes. Charles mm. is her boyfriend. She loves him more than me. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I see. All right. Well, I'll just write it down here that you guys are still going to show up. We'll have a table ready for you by the time you come. All right, bro. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, I'll let you go there. Hi, right, see bro. Hello. Hello. Hello, who is this that is calling me? Hello. I see you're frozen. I'm still here. This is Orson. Ah, Orson. Uh, what is it that you are calling me today? Well, I'm calling you. What's your? I'm gonna make sure I have the right person here. Who yes, is? this is Stephen. Ah, uh, Stephen. Yes, you're the right person. You're the exceedingly tall lad. I would like to uh, help me uh, work on getting the cats at my cat farm that are in the film out of the tree. Hmm. Yes, uh, I'll find a way to work it. Uh, I'll be there after work. Yes, well, we're in Los Angeles and we're doing a, ca a, a film called Cat Baths and Path Pathos. And we wonder if, yes, and, and, and your assistance, your assistance, your assistance. Oh, uh, what was that? Your assistance would be of the utmost. Hmm. Well, Does next week sound good for you? I should be there by next week. Next week, yes, next week, I will send you a private concord to pick you up. Alrighty, that sounds very good. Thank you, thank you for letting me know for this good opportunity. Well, I, I'm very excited. I've heard your skills at cat and cat and, and cat herding are really extensive. Mm. They're there, they're up there, I guess. Mm hmm I hear you're the best. Some say so. Some say so. Do you wear a mouse like I wear a mouse? Uh, unfortunately, nah. Well, we'll get you one. We'll get you one. 
because I think it really enhances your cat herding skills and picking them out of the trees. Mm. Ring, ring, ring. Oh, oh. Steven, I got to go. I got another call coming in. Here. All right. Goodbye now. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, hello. Who's that? This is Orson. Who's that calling, please? It's Kane. Nice to see you, Orson. We meet again. <laughs> so we do. So, how have, you, how have you been? I mean, it's been a long time since you left me it's in Los Angeles. How am I supposed to get back to Colorado? You left me here. I went to thought I'd see you there. I thought I'd see you there for sure. You know? I'm living in the streets now. What is going on? Why would you do this to me? It's method acting, baby. It's method acting. You gotta get into it. You gotta get into it, man. You gotta, gotta. This gotta. is an acting, this this is real life. I'm homeless. I haven't showered in three days. What, what? Well, I'm glad we're on Zoom then, because I can't see you. But, 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 I haven't... Ring, a ding, a ding, a ding. Ring, ring. I gotta let you go. Oh, yeah, ring, yeah. Ring, ring, ring. I will be back for you. Ring, ring, ring. <clears throat> Howdy. Oh, Howdy, Kane. How you doing? It's Jack. Jack, my brother, mm -hmm. man, Jack. I'm you smell. Doing... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. First of all, first of all, what do you smell? I smell something. That's your upper oh. lip, man. I don't I think... know. I'm... Sorry, wait, bro. I'm, I'm living you. it up in LA. I'm getting babes. You know how I. How I do. Howdy, bro. Here you go. This is good stuff, mate. I'm not that smelling, man. You know. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I smoked it a little bit. But I'm just trying to help you here, bro. Because I love you. I love you too, but you didn't call me just to tell me I stink, right? Come on, yeah, bro. I, I was just calling you the bottom of my beard. I finally grew a beard. Mm. And I'm proud of it. What do you think about it? Is it real? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Oh. How long did it take you to grow that? And what, what kind of products are you using? I need one of those. All the babes love the beards. I just been hmm, I just been putting on some uh, peanut butter on my yeah, peanut butter. You know, bro, that's weird, bro. I gotta let I gotta let you go. Try it out, broski. See you later. You look like a samurai. Anyway, how's it going, uh, Francis? I mean, <laughs> what did you call me? I, I'm sorry, I called you by your dad's name. I'm sorry. Why did you do that? He left me. Why did I? I called you. Right away, you're gonna hit me with that. Anyway, I, I just want to call you. Wait, I didn't call you, but you called me. But I want to call you before about my beard. Yeah, I was I just. I seen you upload it on Facebook. I was just to come compliment you, and then you bring up my dad. Don't be sad. I. Me. He said he was going to the store. I don't know how far the store is, but he's never come. <laughs> my dad left me too. It's okay, brother. It's okay. How dare you! I don't, tomato. You know what? I don't even like your beard anymore. I hey, I got you your favorite tomato. No, my dad used to make me tomatoes. I'm sorry. No. Oh, man. Why, you're triggering me. Where's my dad? And then you, the, the tomato soup? You need. Why? I'm sorry, man. Even his beard uh... is shaped like that. I come call you to ask you. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Go back to the whiskers. You're. You're known for the whiskers. No, I love my beard. Now you're gonna bully me about my beard? No, it's too late. You've gone too far. Oh, <sighs> sorry. 
See you later. Are, wait, what's going on? I don't I don't know what's going on anymore. I need my I need my cholo bro. My cholo bro. You're not him. You've gone too far. That's why I grew a beard for it to look like a cholo for you. Oh, you're trying to look like my dad and he's gone. He's gone to the store. What the You think I need this? I'm gonna have nightmares about this tonight, and you're responsible. Those eyebrows are too thick anyway. Those look like two. They're of- onion. They're onion lake eyebrows. Onion lake? I don't mess with onion lake. I'm more of a satellite guy anyway. Okay, satellite. So- There's a lot of hoes in satellite lake. Don't go there. <sighs> well, yeah, but still, I mean, it's satellite lake. You know, <laughs> all I need is five bucks, and I go there, and then I'm set for the night. It's like, know what I'm saying? Oh, I know what you mean there. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, I can't do any of it now because all I think about is my fucking dad. Sorry. Anyway, sorry about that. I love you. Bye bye. Just go. Just go. Just go. Bro, I need your help. What's up, bro? Oh, so good to hear, man. Carlos here. I just got off the phone and this guy oh. brought up my dad and he's gone. Oh no, he didn't! What do I do? What do I do? Mm. I'll pull up in my whip right now. Mommy, no, it's not like I could just put on Dallas' golden sack and he reappears. He's gone. He said I'm gonna go get some tomatoes, and I'm still waiting for that tomato soup. Wait, see your eyes right now. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Tomato soup? That was his thing. He made me tomato soup. Your dad cute though. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> yeah, that tomato soup's good. I will never eat tomato soup the same. Oh Cut. man, oh, he shouldn't have grown up and down like that. Mm. What? What should I do? What do I do? Hmm. How, how tall is he? What? Five? Five eleven? Something like that. No, I'm five eleven. What am I gonna do? How about me and you combine forces? I get on your shoulders, and then we go combine. We're like seven feet. Yeah, I like that. We <laughs> both have <laughs> like Elmo, so we can both okay. use it to our advantage. Ring, ring. Oh, okay. um, no, you gotta go. I got someone calling me. Oh, I'll, be, I'll, meet, I'll meet you later. Hello? I... So I know you don't like know me or anything, uh, but my name is like Kara, and I was like totally following you around the mall the other day because like I thought you were like gorgeous, uh, and I wanted to see if you wouldn't go out with me, like, and I like looked at you on Instagram, but I was too nervous to DM. You know what I mean? You know? So I just called you instead. Wait, 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 wait. You said Kara, but not Karen. Kara. Kara. Oh, I thought you said Karen. <laughs> Go on. Also, I'm brushing my hair with a toothbrush because my mom doesn't want to buy me a ring. I don't even know whose brush this is. I found oh. it. You sound, you sound boring. Um, I'm, do you like KD and Wieners? I don't even know. Whoa, what's, what's it? Wait, are you saying you would cook for me? Whoa, I do more than cook. I'll clean your house. Oh, okay. I, won't, <clears throat> I won't fix your vehicle. <clears throat> I mean, I don't drive. I have a cardboard box to sleep in. But I can give you my address to my mom's house because she's never home. Your mom's house? How old is she? I don't know. She's old. She's like ancient. Oh, you see old now. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> okay, so I'll see you later. Uh, bye. Oh, oh, okay, bye. I gotta go anyways. Uh, wow. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody. Can uh, the cast all come back on? Turn your cameras on. Great. So, wow. Um, this is their first performance in front of a live audience, improvising their way through 
fresh suggestions. So, uh, yeah, we have, so thank you to, based on my screen, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go, thank you, Pearl. Thank you, Sunny. And there, where's number three? Kian. Or is DM Bear? Hey, you. Uh, let me come on. Number six is River. Seven uh, is Francis and Brandon. Everybody, just just take a little bow. Wow, what great performances. I have to say the waffles, the toaster, um, it, you know, the whole alien world. That was um, something to follow for sure. I especially loved the fact that uh, Clyde was a tickler. <laughs> that was amazing. So let's uh, keep the show rolling. I would love to thank you for attending our spring showcase. Do you like what you're watching so far? Hmm? There's always a section that you can comment in and let us know how we're doing. So please help support our students by making a small donation because every dollar goes towards furthering our students' education. Please feel free to donate to our school by clicking the link in the description. Next up, we have Introduction to Scene Study, showcasing scenes from Fallon Johnson's play, Salt Baby, under the direction of Philip Geller, followed by Connecting 2020 video projects under the direction of Ed Roy. We have about an hour left, so hang on tight. Art of this house? Aye. Where may we set our horses? Put in the mire. Prithee, if thou lovest me, tell me. Will I love thee not? Why then I care not for thee? If I had thee lips very painful, I would make thee care for me. Why dost thou use me thus? I know thee not. Oh, fellow, I know thee. What dost thou know me for? A knave? A rascal? An eater of broken meats? A base, proud, shallow, beggarly, three-suited, hundred-pound, filthy, worsted stocking knave! A lily-livered, action-taking, whore-son, glass-gazing, super-serviceable, finical rogue. One drunk inheriting slave, one that wouldst be a bard in way of good service, and art nothing but the composition of a knave, a beggar, coward, pander, and the son and heir of a mongrel bitch, one whom I will beat into clamorous whining if thou deniest the least syllable of thy addition. Why? What a monstrous fellow art thou? Must rail on one that is neither known of thee nor knows thee. What a brazen-faced varlet art thou, to deny thou knowest me. Has it been two days since I tripped up thy heels and beat thee before the king? Draw, you rogue, for though it be night, yet the moon shines, and I'll make a sop of the moon shine on you, you horse uncullionly barbermonger. Draw! Away! I have nothing to do with thee. Draw, you rogue! You come with letters against the king and take vanity the puppet's part against the royalty of her father? Draw, you rascal, or I'll so carbon out of your shanks. Draw, you rogue, come your ways. Help! Oh, murder! Help! Strike, you slave! Stand, rogue! Stand, you neat slave! Strike! Help! Oh, murder! Murder! Weapons? Arms? What's the matter here? Keep peace upon your lives. He dies that strikes again. What is the matter? The messenger from our sister and the king. What is your difference? Speak. I am scarce of breath, my lord. Well, no marvel. 
You have sold the sturdier valor, you cowardly rascal. Nature disclaims thee, a tailor made thee. Thou art a strange fellow. A tailor make a man. Tailor, sir. A stone cutter or a painter could not have made him so ill, though they had been but two years of the trade. Speak yet. How grew your a quarrel? This ancient ruffian, whose life I have spared at suit of his gray beard. Thou whore, son said, thou unnecessary letter. My lord, if you'll give me lead, I will tread this unbolted villain into mortar, daub the wall over takes with him. Spare my gray beard, you wagtail. Peace, sirrah, you beastly knave. Know you no reverence? Well, yes, sir, but will anger hath the privilege? Why art thou angry? That such a slave as this should wear a sword, who wears no honesty. Such smiling rogues as these like are like rats, who oft bite the holy cords of twain, which are to entrins, to unloose, smooth every passion that in the nature of their lords rebel, being oil to fire, snow to the colder moods, renege, affirm, and turn their halcyon beaks with every gale and vary of their masters. Knowing not like dogs, but following. Plague upon your epileptic visage. Smile you my speeches as I were a fool. Goose and I had you upon Serum Plain. I drive ye cackling home to Camelot. What? Art thou mad, old fellow? How fell you out, say that? No contrary sold more antipathy than I in such a knave. Why dost thou call him knave? What is his fault? His countenance likes me not. No more, perchance, does mine, nor his, nor hers. Sir, tis my occupation to be plain. I have seen better faces in my time than stands on any shoulder that stands before me at this instant. This is some fellow who, having been praised for bluntness, doth affect a saucy roughness, and constrains the garb quite from his nature. He cannot flatter, he's an honest mind and plain. He must speak truth, and they will take it. So, if not, he's plain. These kind of knaves, I know, which in this plainness harbored more craft and more corrupt their ends than twenty silly duck in observance that stretch their duties nicely. Sir, in good faith, in sincere verity, under the allowance of your great aspect, whose influence, like the wreath of a radiant fire on flickering Phoebus's front. What means by this? To go out of my dialect, which you discommend so much. I know, sir. I am no flatterer. He that beguiled you in a plain accent was a plain knave, which for my part I will not be, though I should win your displeasure to treat me to it. What was the offense you gave him? I never gave him any. It pleased the king as not fairly to strike at me upon his misconstruction when he, compact and flattering his displeasure, tripped me behind, being down, insulted, railed, and put upon him such a deal of man that worthy of God praises the king for him attempting who was self-subdued and in this dread exploit, drew on me here again. Oh, none of these cowards and fools, but Ajax is their fool. Fetch forth the stocks. You stubborn ancient knave, you reverend braggart, we'll teach you.
with all this um, asking around, everything just seems more unclear. So I've got more questions than I did before. I was thinking there's a way to know my background for sure, to know everything. Oh, yeah? Um, I want to get my DNA analyzed. Your DNA analyzed? Well, what you got to do for that? Well, there are all these places online. Um, you send them a cheek swab, and they analyze it. And they send you your genetic makeup. Everything that's in you in percentages. Uh, don't tell me. You're not curious at all? Well, I mean, that's kind of scary, huh? That's why I want to do it. What do you think you're going to find? Um, I don't know. And, I mean, do you really want to know? I think so. It can change a lot for me and for you. See, that's why I don't want to know. I know all I need to. I like having status. Uh, it's not like it. It's not like um, that. It means having status. Lots of full bloods can't even get status. If an Indian woman married a white man, she lost her status. If you joined the army, if you want to drink all that Bill C-31 crap. Well, I'm happy with my card. I like my rights as a card-carrying Indian. You just like your tax-free... Uh, you just like your tax-free trips to the future shop. It's my right. So, there's this other thing with the DNA test. Yeah. While, this, while the test can only track my X chromosome, mom's side of the family, to track my Y chromosome, I need a Y donor, a male relative to donate DNA. Uh-huh. So um, I was wondering if you'd be willing to donate some DNA. It's just a cheek swab, not like a needle or anything. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't tell. I could just keep it to myself. This from the boy who tells everyone what I got them for Christmas. That was forever ago. That was two years ago. I got excited. And who told Clara when I hit her dog? It slipped out. Sorry, kid. I don't think so. You won't even think about it? Look, I don't want to be anything different than what I've been my whole life. This land, this place, these people. This is me. A pie chart or a graph can say whatever it wants about me, but I know who I am. Hey, you want to go get some greasy food from the chip shop? Are they still selling bottle rockets? You bet. Okay. Dad? Yeah? I'm going to find out what, one way or another. I know.
Uh-oh. Yes, dear, come in. I'll be just one Uh-oh. second. Yeah, just make yourself comfortable. Rain, get off of your sister. Serenity, I'll give you something to cry about. Hello, dear. Yes, just make yourself comfortable. Yep, have a seat. Yes. So may I see your hand, please? Uh, sure. Yes. Oh, all right. Close your eyes. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. So I receive a lot through Native American teachings, and the first thing I get when I sit with you is the armadillo. Armadillo medicine to the Native American is all about boundaries. Set boundaries and remember that the truth and the earth is about honoring what that is. So set boundaries according to what your truth is. Also, for you, I get the eagle. Eagle medicine is all about solo flight and going on your own. Are you leaving a relationship now? Uh, no. No? Are you leaving your job? No. No? Hmm. Oh, also for you, I get the Black Panther. The Black Panther to the native people is all about going into the unknown. Don't be afraid of the unknown, okay? So what is it you would like to ask today? Well, I was hoping to see who you see around me in ancestor terms. Ah, yes. All right. Sure. Mm. Okay. So you were an actress in France in the 1400s, and you also had this past life in South Africa. Are you going to Australia? Not that I'm aware of. Because I get that around you. Also, I get the name... Rose. Is there a rose on your mother's side? On on my father's side. Yep, she's by you. Also, I get the name Mary or Marie. Anyways, so you get definitely get someone whose name is Rose, hey? Is there anything else? No, I guess not. Oh, okay. Um, you kids behave. Right oh, can you make change? Yes, of course, darling. Yes, here. Here you go. Okay, bye, I guess.
don't get it. I mean, would it be that bad if you found out that you're like one quarter native? Would that be so bad? Yes, it would be that bad. It would. Why? I don't get it. You'd still be you. No, it wouldn't be me. I would feel like I had been living a lie. It would feel like my entire existence was bullshit. It's different for Indians. It's always different for Indians. Well, it is. Your people tried to exterminate us, colonized us. My people. Not your people, exactly. I didn't have shit to do with colonization. Look, the point is, I have always been this. My family has always been this. And to be anything else, or mostly anything else, would not only affect me, but them too. My family has been living through the aftermath of residential schools. Genocide. You want to tell my dad? Whoops, there's been a mistake. Looks like you didn't have to go to that awful school. Here, have your culture back. You don't need to be so sensitive. Just, just calm down. Oh my god, fuck yourself. You couldn't understand what this feels like. You're right. I can never understand what it feels like to define myself by somebody else's standards. This isn't about that. It's bigger than that. You're racist. Jesus, fuck. You are. Explain. You think you need to look like an Indian from fucking Dances with Wolves. You buy into it. You're your worst enemy. You blame everyone else, but it's you. It's all you. Say whatever you want, but you can't understand this, this unbelonging. I've been told I look white for my entire life. I can't remember not knowing it. When I was born, they called me Salt Baby. One look at me, and that's what people said. Aren't you ever happy about it? Happy about what? That you don't, I don't know, that you don't wear it, that you can pass. I know that sounds awful, but you don't get put into a box. Uh, you're free to be whoever you want to be without people making judgments before they even get to know you. You have an advantage in a way. People can be awful to brown people. I know. Were you awful? Did you have opinions about brown people? No, of course not. But I mean, shit. Some of the stuff I've heard my family say, it's fucking sick. Well, they are going to love me. They will love you. Because I don't wear it. Because I'm not so brown. Because I can pretend I'm Portuguese or something. I don't have to be the Indian at the table. I can be ambiguously ethnic. What a privilege to be me, eh? I get to be whatever I want, whatever I want, except for the one thing I am. All, miss, all I'm saying is you have a choice. You get to choose. I don't want the choice. I just want to be browner. I don't even tan well. I just get all blotchy. You don't need to be browner to be Indian. I'm allowed to say Indian now, right? Let me run it by the band office. I think you're perfect. Blotchy town and all. Yeah. Absolutely.
Jesus, what in the hell are you watching? Uh, something about commercials. Something about men taking care of their own. Does it gotta be so damn loud? I guess not. Okay. So, how long you staying? Uh, don't know why. You want to get rid of me? Heck no. You know I wish you'd move home. Get out of that damn city. I know. So, how's... What's his head? What's his head? It's done. Over. Oh. Yeah, well... It wasn't wasn't ever going to work out, you know. Anyway, waste of time. Why do you say that? Because he's white. You broke up with him because he's white. Jeez, you didn't tell him that, did you? Well, yeah. He wanted to know, so I told him. You dumped his scrawny ass because he's white. Well, yeah. Really? Mostly. Were you happy? Did he make you happy? Doesn't matter now. He hates me. Thinks I'm crazy. Thinks I'm some kind of uh, aim Indian. You sort of are. I think I screwed this up. I don't know. I think I did. It wasn't right. It's the time. It wasn't right for you to be with him. One day it will be right. Just not with him. No, not with him. Can I ask you something? Yeah.
came without warning, and it spreads like wildfire. The virus has killed more than one thousand people. Death has risen overnight in that massive explosion in Beirut that death toll has climbed to more than one hundred people. This morning is said to be the most Bryant powerful blast ever seen. People have been infected with COVID-19 worldwide, according to new numbers released by John Hopkins. Small border county is so overwhelmed. Doctors are now deciding who lives and who dies from dead shortly after. The man was 46-year-old George Floyd. The nation erupted into scenes of chaos, violence, oh and widespread destruction into the early morning hours. Dozens of American cities up in flames. Hours before a curfew was ordered, the city became a war zone. Large groups torched police cruisers. No justice! No peace! If it wasn't that, I wouldn't be the person that I am. And if I was cutting back and going back to misery, I might as well run it back and tell you what it did to me and said to me, giving me these reoccurring memories of running long nights and fighting battles mentally. If it wasn't mentally, I was losing physically. The battles of my energy and universal mysteries. On and on about a fight that I was losing willingly. I just wanted a trip. I just wanted to slip. I just wanted to grip and spend every dollar I get, wouldn't settle for less, sorry I couldn't give it the best effort, the feelings I couldn't suppress is making me feel oppressed. This is the power effect of losing the people he left, now I really do feel the effects and this reflect on what I am and I'm neglecting all my friends but most importantly they're offering their help but I said no. So I said screw it, and I created this haven for the week, give them a place to sleep, give them the space to be whatever that they want to be, not gonna hold nobody back, you have my support, give my jacket on my back and then we're sleeping on the porch. <sighs> Good morning yo, the year is 2030 and I've seen you've grown, are you still a little tired from this lonely road, did we accomplish a little bit of our goals, and I know we had our falls, had our slips. Never had a chance to kiss opportunity, writing it slips, what did it do to me? I'm moving on and chasing the bliss. What bliss? Fuck this shit. I hate this. I miss being a fucking kid who doesn't pay shit. Stressing out and moving again. Losing a friend? I'm hanging on and losing my shit. Straight conflict fate really testing my strength. I just lost weight. Hating everything in my way. I just want faith, God please I'm spinning away, I'm in the wrong lane, mine's not in it's rightful place, and I don't want this, maybe I do, and if I want shit, I gotta get up and move, and if I have to, I will leave everyone but you, and I don't want to, it's either me or losing, I don't got juice to waste on stressful moves, I've come a long way, I'm still learning a lot from you, maybe a small play, but I'm willing to add in room, doesn't really matter, as long as I get to be new, too busy, chasing a dream, chasing a bliss, I'm fucking up, I'm making a list of all the dumb shit Holding on, I'm hoping to wish for help me fix this fucking lonely world I'm in Imagination. I am moving, but staying still. I am tense. I shouldn't be. Be free and feel free. Move forward. Positivity. Be calm. Be relaxed, yet anxiety. There is anxiety, but be in control. It's always there. It's my best friend. 
Don't want to be afraid. I'm not, but I am. Confusing. Mind lost. Screaming inside. Relax. Breathe. Realizing I am here. Music plays? Music plays. Clear mind. Blood flows. Able to think. Movement begins. I'm drifting into space. Away from reality. Outstanding focus. Unburdened. Love. Music in my ears. I feel great. I'm only away for a little while. Nothing lasts forever. BAM! I'm back here in this gloomy world. But I'm grateful. Grateful to have dance by my side as a shield to protect my mind. I need to achieve my dreams. I have younger brothers. I have a role. Dance to inspire, not to impress. Let's live this life and keep moving forward. 2020. When I was six, I remember playing outside with my sister and one of the neighborhood kids. She was white. I remember her saying, Indians don't pay taxes. You're lucky. My sister said, no, we're not, and went inside and told my mom. My mom came out and talked to my friend about what she said. I felt embarrassed. I didn't want my mom to confront my friend, and I didn't want my friend to think less of me because I didn't find it a big deal. I knew what she said was wrong, but I didn't think my mom should get mad at her. At that time, I was just more focused on keeping friends. I was surrounded by Jaganash. In the second grade, my teacher would call my mom in for meetings to discuss my progress in class, or in her eyes, lack thereof. She told my mom a lot of the other Indian children she had taught in the past also struggled to read. And that has forever been embedded in my mind. In the fifth grade, I saw Idle No More on the news. It was the first Native protest I remember seeing. I grew passionate about the protest and what it stood for. We were supposed to write an article as if it were to go in the paper about a current event, and I chose to write about Idle No More. In the sixth grade, I hit puberty and my mom bought me my first bra. Afterwards, I remember sitting with her in the car for a long time because she was telling me how dangerous it was to be a young indigenous woman. She told me how many of her sisters, cousins, aunties have gone missing. Don't trust anyone. You can never be too careful, she said. Then in the eighth grade, I was telling my white friend about missing and murdered indigenous women and she told me it was a hoax. Millions of other women go missing each day, not just Native women. I hated what she said. I was so hurt and angry, and I just cried in front of her because I was furious, but I couldn't defend myself. I knew what she said was wrong, but I felt so powerless and I didn't know enough to explain. I stopped being friends with her. I decided to start educating myself out of spite and out of fear that if I was in a situation like that again, I'd know what to say. As I grew older, I gathered more and more knowledge of my culture and people. We have survived hundreds of years of mass genocide, hundreds of years of war, abuse, inequality, and violence. They put our children through residential schools, tearing families apart, stripping children of their language and culture, then sticking us onto reserves and reservations where if you leave your home, you're out of place, unwelcomed, and judged. If you don't leave the reserve, then you're a low life. I often fear for my life whenever I step out of the house alone holding my keys in my hands when men approach me in public, preparing myself for the worst because you can never be too careful, sending my Uber info to my boyfriend, sending my location any time I leave the house at night because you never know. To this day, we still fight for our rights. We fight to eat, have clean drinking water, for justice for our missing and murdered people. We fight for our land back. Growing up, I was always told I wouldn't amount to much. I was dumb, I couldn't read, probably wouldn't graduate high school and end up as another lazy ending work, working a shitty minimum wage job, babies hanging off both arms, blowing my money on booze. But here I am. 
I moved out of my mom's house at 17 years old to chase my dreams of becoming an actor. Before I moved out, I worked my ass off to save money. Now I pay my own bills, buy my own groceries. All by myself, here I am going after what I crave most in life. I come from a strong line of women. Women who made themselves out of nothing into something who inspires everyone they come across. No matter what hurdles life has coming for me, I've learned to never give up. I learned that from my indigenous family. We are not lazy, we are not quitters, we are beautiful, inspiring, and strong, and resilient. I chose the color red as my theme for this look. Red lipstick was actually banned for women a long time ago because men believed it was color prostitutes or hookers wore. Hence why most people thought the color was taboo or promiscuous. But a red dress is used to represent missing and murdered indigenous women. It's a bright, beautiful, vibrant color. And some tribes believe the color red can be seen by spirits. By wearing red, we can call back the spirits of our missing and murdered sisters and brothers and let them be at peace. To me, red represents us indigenous people, our power. Bright, vibrant, you can see us coming from miles away. Red makes our voices loud. connected entities in this world, rooted deeply to the earth and everything that happens here. The year is 2020. The year everyone thought that they'd get things right. The year I thought I was going to figure everything out, a new chapter in this book of life. To connect back to my culture, the land, and to better relationships with others. But 2020, a very tough year for any attempts to reconnect back to our roots. Now we had to adjust to a whole new way of life, find new ways of engaging with our heritage through a socially distanced lens, searching for fresh methods to get back, reminiscing about the old ways that we took for granted, my culture, my way of life. This is a slap to the face, a wake-up call. How could I sustain and uplift myself while the world seemed to be ending right before my eyes? No social events, hockey, ceremonies, celebrations, and definitely no powwows. I was way too close to losing my head. 
searching for different means, different ways to connect, back, back, way back to the original teachings. Look within. To gain that knowledge, I had to look within. To seek that knowledge, I used the medicines for guidance. I had to look within. Is this what it means to be indigenous in 2020? The creator gave us a challenge. I took it on with open arms. All it took was a pandemic for me to figure it out. A blessing in disguise. I truly am grateful. Wow, those performances were amazing. I have to say, I especially love the dances. I love watching dances, and I'm a little bit of a dancer myself. <laughs> I just want to give a little shout out to some of the comments um, that have been popping up. I've been watching the live stream here on my YouTube page. So I'm seeing some comments from Fox in Mox. I love the name. I see Rose Stella commenting. Hello, Rose. Uh, I see Denise Bolduk, Bolduk, Jay Lukowski. Hello, Jay. I'm glad that you made it today. Um, and there's a few others here. I'm sorry, I'm not going to take too much time looking back, but I've been following the comments and following the performances, and I just really appreciate all the support, and I'm sure our performances appreciate all of your support. So I wanted to personally thank you all for your attendance. We do have two more evenings of action-packed adventures brought to you by the faculty, students, and the staff here at CIT. I'd like to remind you all that this is a pay-as-you-can performance and your donations are greatly appreciated. They fuel our programming for our students. You can donate by clicking the link in the description. And finally, we would like to give a huge thank you to our public funders who are making the programming available. A warm thank goes out to the Department of Canadian Heritage, Ontario Arts Can Council, Toronto Arts Council, BMO Financial Group, Mizuway Beck, Aboriginal Employment and Training, and Hastings Park Foundation of Rights and Freedoms, and to our private funders and people like you. So thank you all very much, and I hope to see you all tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Eastern. Have a good night.